Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Area 31. I'm stood over here once again at this space base that isn't really in space for another episode and today I've got a whole bunch of really awesome stuff that I've got planned and that I want to get done. I need to set up a way of remotely turning our teleporters on and off and to do that I'm going to make some things from wireless redstone and the entire idea for this plan was uh, given to me by a friend who's also on the server so I'll leave their channel linked below and I also want to upgrade our reactor because if you saw the last episode where where we made all of the force field stuff, you'll know that the reactor was just making a tiny bit less power than we actually needed. So we need to upgrade this, get more power out of it, and that is the plan for today. Now, you'll be noticing in the last episode that I have linked these teleporters together and stopped using this portable teleporter. Well, basically, I got fed up of having to type in numbers every single time. I wanted to go to my base, back to my base. It got really annoying after a little while. So I linked these together, but that leaves these portals vulnerable to people going ahead and finding the code and teleporting to our base and that's something we really don't want to do so I want to set up a way of breaking the teleporter frame when I uh, want to and for that we're going to use some wireless redstone and I'll get started crafting that up in a second or two but beforehand I want to quickly mention that throughout this series we are raising money for Cancer Research UK and when you make a donation to the charity via our website we receive some items in games such as these things just here and we receive different things depending on how high or low the donation was so if you're are interested there are some links down below in the description if you're not able to donate or you're not interested in doing so then you can still leave a like on the video and it will help other people to find the series and hopefully help us raise more money for the charity for now though let's get started with the episode we'll get started crafting some things up and for all the wireless redstone gubbins i'm going to need a couple of things called aretha pearls so we'll get started with those in a second or two let's go and have a look at how we craft them up so we're going to need ender pearls if you remember when we made all these tesseracts, ender pearls are really difficult to get. Hopefully we have enough though for this. I think I've got something along the lines of like four or five in the ME system left over from the tesseracts. So we should just have enough for what we want to do. I think we're going to need three of these. Let's take a quick look at the remote and how we make that just so we can make sure. Yeah, we're going to need a transceiver for that one as well. So I am going to need three of these our ether pearls. Ooh, that's three of my ender pearls gone. Hopefully we can get some more. I do have some ender lilies growing upstairs. So hopefully we can use those uh, when we need it. We're also going to need some obsidian sticks as well. And I'm going to make a fair few of these because I know we might end up needing them. We're going to need our transceivers which is the R ether pearl on top of the obsidian stick. So let's get a couple of these. That's our three of those that we need. And the rest of these sticks should be able to just be laid in the ME system. We'll come back to those in a second. And seeing as I'm here, I might as well just quickly go ahead and make ourselves... Uh, why did that... Did that say obsidian? Oh no, it's blank stone. Okay. Yeah, I might as well go ahead and make myself a button. And for that, I'm going to need to smelt up some cobblestone. So let's grab a little bit of cobblestone out of the ME system. And I'm going to quickly throw it into this furnace over here. Brilliant. So we'll get ourselves a button in a second. We should then be able to make our remote. And while we wait for that remote, let's hop back into the ME system and we'll grab ourselves some transmitters or receivers. They're actually what we want. The reason we need receivers is because I'm not going to be transmitting the signal. I'm going to use the remote to send the signal and I'm going to use the receivers at the teleporters to receive it. So let's go and grab some of these. Only going to need two of these. I'm going to need some stone bowls. So let's have a quick look how we make stone bowls. It's just three bits of stone. Luckily, we've got some stone smelting up in the furnace. So that's absolutely amazing. We can get some of these quickly made. So that's two receiver dishes. One and two. If it will let me craft them up. Come on. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Brilliant. And let's go and craft this up very, very quickly. So those obsidian sticks, some slabs, some redstone. Not very difficult at all. And those are our two wireless receivers. Now we're going to have one of those at our base. The other one is going to be here where our bed is because obviously this isn't our base. This is where all of our machines are, but they will eventually get moved over to the space base that isn't really in space once I've got the teleporter up and running. And I'm going to need to quickly grab the recipe for the remote as well. I think it was just a button. But yeah, we're going to have one of those at our base, one of those somewhere else as well, which is going to be here at our bed. And we're going to be able to use the remote to send a redstone signal to them. And when we do that, we can then go ahead and send that redstone signal into a piston and that will go ahead and break and fix the portal so that should work quite well so I'm going to need some slime balls for that piston actually so luckily we've got some blue slime in there let's grab ourselves a piston 
We're going to need two of those, and I think we can just use blue slime on top of these, and these should work straight up. So let's grab some slime balls, and hopefully these work on top of the piston. I'm not quite sure, but let's quickly test it. Yeah, we can get two sticky pistons from that. Absolutely fantastic. So that is our bare components ready to go really simple actually not too difficult and we can get ourselves a really little handy system that's going to turn the teleporters on and off let's quickly turn this into the piston and let's set a code now i'm obviously going to be changing this code at a later date so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly hide this out of the way because i don't want these to be visible on video once i've got the code in place um because i'm going to change it directly after the episode so if anyone else from the server is watching my episode they don't find out how to initiate my portals and um they don't have to find the code out in there which is amazing so let's set this to something like 101 just for this episode brilliant so that's our 101 portal we'll get ourselves our remote if we shift right click we can set this to 101 and when we hold right click that will go ahead and disable the portal if we hold right click that will enable it we can then walk into the portal and then the portals will disable. Brilliant. Now if I hold right click now because that area is chunk loaded these portals should then link together hopefully anyway if we walk into this, it then teleports us back. Absolutely fantastic. That is so cool. Now, what I need to do is do the same for this portal over here, which means removing the dimensional anchor, which I'm not too thrilled about, but we'll get that done. Move it over to somewhere like on the right of this, because we're definitely going to want this area to be chunk loaded. And I'll set this back up to what I had it at, and we'll just quickly set up a little bit of this wireless redstone up here. So I believe we can do that. We can use micro blocks with wireless redstone, and I think we can place it on a wall. So let's quickly rotate this. There we go. And we'll set this to 101 again. So can we access that? Yes, there we go. And we'll set it to 101. Then when we use our teleporter or portal, there we go. That's disabled for now. I do want to hide all of this stuff at a later date as well. I might add some more bits of teleporter frame or maybe some of these factory blocks around here to try and create an area where we don't see that this actually turns on and off. Now, if we hold right click, we should be able to then walk into the teleporter. This one will be active and then disable when we get here. Vice versa. That is really cool. So that means that if anyone else is on the server, they have to know my wireless redstone code, which I will change, and they'll also have to know the code of the teleporters as well. So that is so, so, so amazing. I'm thrilled to bits with that. That's absolutely awesome. We've got ourselves a wireless redstone system that turns our teleporter on and off, and that is amazing. Now all I've got to do is pretty this area up a little bit. I want to try and remove this stuff around here, and I want to decorate it so it doesn't look as weird at the top, because this does look a little bit strange. And I've finished sprucing this up a little bit. So this is what I've done. I've added some carpenter's blocks around the top to disguise all the redstone, the dimensional anchors and all that stuff that's hidden up there. When it's turned off, it looks just like a normal portal. And then when we turn it back on, yeah, it works. So that's absolutely brilliant. The carpenter's blocks disguise it quite well. Now, another thing I've just been spending a little bit of time doing and I've been testing some different styles of reactors is because I want to upgrade my reactor. Now, you'll notice I've moved the chests over quite a bit to make some room. Well, we're going to be making a 7x7 reactor, but we're only making it 3 high. Now, I've done a whole bunch of testing with different reactors to try the best coolant out, and I think we're going to go with destabilized redstone because we don't have access to a crazy amount of enderpearls, and I don't know anywhere where there's a cold biome nearby where we can find blizzards, so cryothium is definitely off the list. So redstone is going to be our coolant, and a 7x7x3 reactor is going to be our reactor. Now, I did a little bit of searching around on different forums and so on, and there was a spreadsheet that shows the best layouts for some reactors if I remember I'll leave it in the description and um the 7x7x3 reactor is sort of the best one which is around that size compared to how many resources it costs. Um, it produces about 4000 RF a tick which is absolutely amazing that is lots of power more than we'll ever need and I don't know what happened there but we're going to get started crafting that up. Now I think I have an idea about how many resources we're going to need. Hopefully we can make the reactor with what we've got. We do have quite a bit of steel so that should be good. So let's start having a look at the different recipes we're going to need for the reactor. Now I'm probably going to need to do a quite a bit of the crafting off camera because I don't think I've got all the smelted up yellow right ready and I think I'm short on graphite bars. 
Yeah, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of preparation for this. I need around a round of stack more casing, I need a stack of reactor glass, and as for everything else, I'm only going to need a couple more of the fuel rods and the control rods, so that's not too bad. So I'm going to get crafting up all of this stuff. You did see me craft up a whole bunch of reactor stuff. Uh, I think it was one or two episodes ago when I made the original 3x3 reactor, so I'm going to get all this done off camera, and then we'll upgrade our reactor to be super, super, super amazing. I've done as much as I can without breaking the reactor, so it's finally time for us to break our old reactor and turn it into the new ones. So let's quickly hop inside here, and I should be able to use the crescent hammer on these blocks. No, I have to mine them. Okay, I just wondered if I could. Okay, so that old reactor is now fully broken. We can start demolishing everything in here. Okay, let's go and get rid of these blocks as well because we don't need the item ducts in here we don't want item ducts present in our brand new reactor so let's just get rid of the rest of these as well i'm going to need to get rid of the power tap and that needs to go on the back of this reactor so that's not too bad and this 7x7x3 seven by seven by reactor does look a little bit weird with it being only three high you'd be used to them being a square or something along those lines but from what I saw, this does seem to be the best way of doing a reactor for this amount of resources. Uh, so let's go and test this out. I need to get rid of these blocks just there. And let's pop the power tap on the back. We need the access ports on each side so it works again. And let's just configure these one moment before we do anything else. So this wants to be on outlet mode and it wants to eject waste. And the one over here wants to be on the inlet mode. And that wants to be um, inlet mode. There we go, brilliant. And then this can go into here. Now, ejecting the fuel, I believe, got that out of that core in the center. So I hope that that worked. It doesn't look like there's any eulorium in there. And if we eject the waste here, no, it won't remove it. Okie dokie. Let's go and put down the last things we need for this then. So we've got our fuel rods and control rods and the way this reactor's laid out is we've got the uh, the fuel rods in the middle in a 3x3 three three square and then the coolant surrounds them. The control rods are on top and they all need to be set to 0% on this design and that seemed to be the way that it worked best when I tested it. So we've got one extra control rod I believe. Let's just right click on something and see if it's just acting a little bit strange. Yeah, okay, that's gone now, brilliant. And I've got this to stabilize redstone. Now, I have got to melt it down some of it. It gives you speed, luckily. So, luckily, it doesn't teleport you around while you're on here. And what I need to do is I need to fill in all of this reactor with this redstone. So, I need to make a few trips back and forth from my base to fill up this reactor with redstone. And then, once that's filled up with that, that'll then be our coolant complete for the reactor. So, that is ever so cool. That is done. And I just need to finish filling this up. So, back to base, back to meltdown redstone, and back to fill this up. And wow, it, it goes for quite a while. Let's just place down a couple of blocks along here so it doesn't run everywhere. After several return trips, our reactor is now filled up with redstone, and all we have to do now is fill in the top with some reactor glass. Now, I don't know why I'm using reactor glass for the top. Um, we're not going to be able to see it, but I didn't have any more casing, and I'd made a little bit more glass, and I thought, well, let's go ahead and have the top in glass. I do have this casing here, but we might need that for something else, so let's actually just use glass for the top. It leaves it looking cool, and we get some light into the reactor so we can see what's going on. So now that that's done, we need to just break this block on the front, replace it with the controller, which is going to control our reactor and turn it into the giant multi-block that's going to give us lots of power, and then that should be absolutely awesome. Let's quickly plonk that down there, and it should have worked. There we go, that is our reactor formed. This is online now, which is amazing. And what are we getting? We've got lots of fuel in here. We've got a heat which is around 1000 C. That shouldn't be too bad. Um, from the tests it idled at, idled at about 1400 and it was producing 3.80 uh, kilo RF per tick. So that's not too bad actually. Um, this seems to be quite stable as well. That is absolutely amazing. It's obviously going to use more fuel than the last reactor. The last one was using about half of the fuel, maybe even a quarter of the fuel that this is using, but this isn't too bad. That is actually quite a nice reactor that we've got set up there. So that is going to be our nuclear reactor that's going to give us all of our power. It's connected to the batteries that are underneath. If we hop around the back, it should be connected. I might have to quickly reset this cable because sometimes they act a little bit strange. That is lit up anyway, so there is power going through there. And I should be able to quickly go down here, break some of this cable, and check out the batteries and see how quick it's actually filling this stuff up. So let's quickly pick up this cable, and then we can check out our batteries that are beyond here. 
So what are they filling up like? We've got, yeah, wow, they are filling up quite quickly. That is actually quite good. If we take a look in there, it's already full, which is amazing. So that is our reactor setup. Really awesome reactor that we've got now. We've got lots of power going on in the base, which is going to be amazing. We shouldn't end up running out of power now for quite a while. And we can always upgrade this if we really want to as well. If we need more power in the future and we need a bigger reactor, we do have the space to do that. So that's absolutely fantastic. But for now, though, I think that is everything done with the reactor. With the reactor now set up and creating lots of power, we've got a problem. What is the problem? Well, we've got too much power. We've gone from having not enough to too much power. If we take a quick look in here, we're producing 3,700 redstone flux per tick, which is absolutely amazing. But the problem then lies with the cable. The cable can only transfer 800 redstone flux per tick. So about 3,000 redstone flux per tick is getting wasted, which is not good. It's not even getting used, which is really bad. Now, we could just upgrade the cable to a higher tier mechanism one but we've got a couple of options with what we can do with that if we take a quick look at the mechanism cable it gets fairly expensive later on that's the one we're using the next one up which doesn't even carry the amount of power we need needs circuits so that's not too bad it's affordable but this one that would carry the power we need needs atomic cores for each bit of cable so that is really expensive and a lot of crafting just for a little bit of cable when we could just go and craft up some hardened glass and electrum ingots and create ourselves some redstone energy conduit now this stuff will transfer around 10,000 redstone flux per tick so it's still just as good as this one not as good but for the price it costs it's just it's great and uh, I don't think we'll be creating more than 10,000 redstone flux per tick anytime soon so this will definitely be a really good cable for now and possibly for the rest of our base because like I said I don't see us getting more power than what we've already got now let's have a look in the ME system. I need to grab a bit more redstone for that conduit. So let's just quickly grab some of this out of here. And I'll quickly whack some of that into the magma crucible. There we go. And I'll grab this. So this should be enough for us to get rolling with. There'll be some more crafting up in there uh, for a little later on in case we need it. Because I might end up just replacing all of the cable around our base with this conduit. Because in the long run it's going to be cheaper and more effective for our machines. Because if you think about it, this is only transferring 800 redstone flux per tick. And we've got our force field on it. We'll have all our machines on it. We'll have our teleporter on it. So that is a lot of power it needs to transfer. And I don't think it's up to it. So this stuff will definitely fix the problem so let's go and remove all this cable i'll add some conduit down here hook it up to the back of the batteries and i might go around the rest of the base and just add conduit to everything just so it's a nice power source that's going around the base and not this cable that's not really up to the job so I have done a bunch of work since the last part of the video because I was waiting for lots and lots and lots of these redstone energy conduits to craft up. Basically I had to make a whole bunch of electrum so I had to wait for all that to smelt up. Then I had to melt down the redstone and fill them up so that took a while. And while I was waiting for all of that I decided to do some work on the base. Now I finally decided on a lighting solution for up here. I was going to use energized glowstone but I decided that these lamps from Project Red would look cool as well. And I could make them quite easily because I had lots of bone meal for the Lumar that they needed so that is absolutely amazing and I think they look quite good they get rid of the lighting problem in the corridors means I can remove the torches that were around the base I've also added a bunch more of these illuminators that I've been using for the other rooms in this middle room to light it up get it looking good and means I can remove the torches and now all I've got to work on is these two extra little wings of the base one of them is going to have the machines in there and the other one I'm not quite sure of just yet I'll have to decide for now though that is going to be everything for today's episode we have got a whole bunch of stuff done today we've got the portal system set up and running so we've got our sneaky sneaky teleporter portals working so that is awesome and i also now have my reactor upgraded and producing a ton of power i am so excited with this we've got lots and lots of power we can do lots of stuff and it also means that once we move our machines over here we can grab ourselves the tesseract that was powering the mother machines and use it to put quarries all over the world which is going to be really exciting so for now though, hope you've all enjoyed today's episode. If you're interested in donating to the charity we're raising money for, there's some, uh, there's some um, links in the description. And you can also leave a like on the video if you're not interested in donating but still want to support the series. And for now, hope you've all enjoyed the episode and I will see you all on the next one.